Well, for the Tennessee Volunteers, week four is in the books, and that game pretty much lived up to most of the hype that it built going into, which, to be honest with you, I was kind of wondering about. I was like, you know, this game has been talked about so much this week by so many people, and so much has been said. It, is it going to live up to the hype? And I think for the most part it did. Um, Coach Heupel's return to Oklahoma and everything that, that goes with that. He, uh, well, I'll get into that in a minute. Um, but you've got to think watching that game that, and this has been said by a lot of people leading up to this game just by what's been seen in the first three weeks of the season, but Tennessee finally now has a complete team. Um, it's no secret and has been no secret for years now that Josh Heupel's um, offense scheme plan is legit. It's one of the best, if not the best, offensive game plans in the country. And now he's actually got a really good redshirt freshman quarterback that can run it for him. Um, yeah, yeah, in years past, Josh Dobbs was good, but... You know, everybody could could tell that, you know, our quarterback last year, you know, was a, a step a little bit in the wrong direction. He wasn't bad, but but anyway. Um, but now to go along with that offense that we know, that we've known we've had for a couple of years and all the potential that goes with it, now we've got a defense. And that defense was primarily what was talked about last night, even when the offense was on the field. The, the commentators uh, just went on and on and on about how improved the defense is, how seemingly improved the secondary is. Though here we here's the thing. The biggest question going into, I think, week from week two on, uh, because in the preseason, obviously, you know, one of the biggest questions around the, the Tennessee team was how improved is your defense? Um, and even the last year, the, the defensive line wasn't terrible, but our defensive secondary was. So the obviously the biggest question was how improved is that that secondary? Well, for the through the first three weeks, we had no answer to that um, as far as how much the Tennessee secondary had improved because we didn't play a team that could get to the secondary because our defensive line is so suffocating. I don't think we know any more today after the Oklahoma game last night than we did this time last week. Um, now, Oklahoma does not have a good offense. Um, they Oklahoma got exposed on some problems they've got, um, even if it exposed those problems to them. Uh, but Tennessee's defense, yeah, I don't think really – anybody saw the real potential for how suffocating that, that defense could be. Um, Oklahoma, yeah, they've got, they've got a defense too. Uh, they don't have a defense as, as good as Tennessee's, but they've got a defense too. Um, the first half of that game, you know, those of you that watch it would probably agree it was a defensive struggle. It was 20, it was 19 to three at halftime. So, yeah, Tennessee couldn't. Tennessee didn't have the explosive plays that they're used to having in the first half. Though they did have that one long pass play to uh, Thornton. I think it was in the maybe the second quarter. Uh, could have been around the end of the first, but that just one long uh, pass play to Thornton that that ended up scoring a touchdown. So um, it, it was a lot of run, run. It, Dylan Sampson, um, the other new. Guy, I don't have his name right here, but uh, Bishop, Deshaun Bishop. Um, it was Sampson and Bishop all night long, just a dual tandem uh, running back for a few yards here, a few yards yards there, and it and it, it got the, the job done. Oklahoma on offense, you know, there's this old saying that's been said, you know, it's almost a cliche by now, I'm sure most of y'all would agree. If you have two quarterbacks, then you don't have a quarterback, and apparently that's the problem at, at Oklahoma. Uh, their starting quarterback was supposed to be one of the best things in college football. Very highly recruited uh, 
kid coming out of high school in the, the class he was in. I think like overall for the entire class, he was like number three. And he came out of the same class that, that Nico did. And Nico was like 23rd or something. Um, he couldn't get it done. Couldn't get it done. In the, in the, in the first quarter, he turns it over twice and um, they end up pulling him. Now they pulled him out at a really weird time. But uh, because it gave Tennessee a chance to go into the locker room, having seen him a little bit and to see what he would do, and the defensive coordinators and coaches could be like, okay, if they put this backup in, you know, here's what he's going to do, kind of kind of deal. So we were we were almost able to game plan for him for 20 minutes during halftime. But um, you know, Tennessee had more offensive yards. Each team gave up three sacks. Of course, most of y'all know that saw the game ended up the final score ended up being twenty five to fifteen. Uh, you know, overall, my per, my opinion, my my perspective of the game, the game went about like we thought it would. Personally, did I did I see Tennessee score in just an ungodly amount of points in this game? Like they had the first three games, not necessarily, no, but. You know, me, obviously, like everybody else did, did predict the win. Um, I didn't think Oklahoma would play quite as bad as they did. Um, but they, like I said, they, they've got some issues they've got to work out. Oklahoma's, I, I really, I, okay, so Tennessee's defensive line is legit. They They lived in the Oklahoma backfield all night. But... You know, was it the fact that Tennessee's defensive line was that bad or was Oklahoma's offensive line – or Tennessee's defensive line that good or was Oklahoma's offensive line that bad? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, their their offensive line has, has some, some issues. They, they, if, they only sacked Oklahoma's quarterback three times. But they were after him all night. Like I said, they, they lived in that backfield. I can't, there were and I didn't write this stat down because I'm not really a stats guy. It was a couple of notes I, I took down before I came on here to do the video. But the the tackles for loss that Tennessee had against Oklahoma were insane. They they were insane. I would venture to say that most of the defensive tackles that were made during the game were for loss yardage. Um, they they were smothering. They were sm flying to the ball, smothering to the ball. And, you know, as far as Oklahoma's defense, you know, there was a lot of talk about that 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 defensive back they had, that linebacker they had, um, Stuntsman, I think was his name. You know, he was highly touted and, and really, really talked about a lot leading up to the game. I think they called his name twice. He, you know, he broke – I remember there was one play – he broke through. It was a run and play, uh, and Tennessee was on the goal line, about to score. They were on Oklahoma's goal line, and uh, it was not Bishop. It was Sampson gets the ball, run and play. Stuntsman gets to him on like the three or four yard line, and he just spins away from him and ends and ends up scoring. So yeah, he, he's a good player. I'm not saying that he's not. I'm not. I'm not nowhere near saying that the, that the guy's overrated or anything. But Tennessee did their homework on this guy and they, they knew how to contain him. Uh, I really have to give all the credit for this win to our defense, especially our, our demon, our defensive line. You know, if anybody cared what I thought and I were to, to name a, you know, a player of the game or anything like that, I would say the entire defensive line because go, I didn't, I didn't say this out loud, at the time, but getting on towards halftime, and especially through the the second half, you know, being at being a long time Tennessee fan and kind of seeing what our trends are and what our bad habits are, the the one worry that I had, the the one issue that I was really kind of worried about, is I was defensively I was waiting for the wheels to fall off. They had played so hard and so well through the first half of the game. I was like, are they going to be able to sustain this? the entire game now yeah they get on to the end of the game oklahoma ends up scoring a couple more points they had some oklahoma had some really impressive drives there towards the end of the game and i do not fault tennessee's defense for that at all at all um those guys left everything they had in norman last night and 
to to kind of draw back a little farther and look at this whole thing as a as a big picture i saw a video from the locker room after the game of coach heupel talking to the team and we have a re we have an elite coach we have an elite team um he asked them flat out, did y'all did play your best? Did we have our best game? And everybody, it was a thundering no. Um, that, that, that team has a natural mindset that no matter how good things go, no matter really how well they play, they could have played better. There's always something to get better on. There's always something to learn from. And kind of leading into the next point I wanted to make, I'm really, really interested to see where this Tennessee team goes from here because we, in the, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to find out exactly what this team is made of because if somebody wanted to, they could go back and nitpick, okay, Tennessee did this wrong, they did this wrong, they did it, and they could kind of make a list of everything that did go wrong or didn't really go that great in this game. How much of that stuff is going to get fixed? Um, yeah, they won the game, so it's not like you know it, Oklahoma's going to stay in their head. You know, they not like you have to uh, lose a game more than once, kind of thing. Though Oklahoma may lose this game more than once. Yeah, what's the growth process going to be? Where where are they going to go from here? Where's this team? Where's this coaching staff going to go from here? Thank God we got a bye week next week, so a little bit of extra time to kind of kind of get their feet back up under them. Like I said, that defensive line probably had the best night of sleep of their life last night. I mean, they 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 balled out. They they played it. There there were several of those guys. There wasn't nothing. There, there wasn't nothing left. And you know, my hats off to them. Seriously. Um, played one hell of a game, but 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 where's this team going to go from here? Um, as good as our offensive line did play, you know, Nico got sacked three times, um, and twice I know once, but I think twice um, lost the ball, um, fumbled, and, and it was a turnover. And you know, then our defense comes back. That's one of the weird things about the first half. Um, they get to Nico twice. He takes a sack, fumbles the ball, turns it over. Oklahoma comes back out on offense with excellent field position, and on their first play, turns it right back over to Tennessee. And then you know we go we go down the field. So it was two two turnovers, two takeaways that that Oklahoma had that resulted in nothing. They didn't they didn't get no points out of it. Um, so, but yeah, where, where's this Tennessee team going to go from here? What are they going to look like in a couple of weeks? Um, you know, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't have the schedule right in front of me, but they, like I said, they do have the off week next week, and then the week after that, they get Arkansas. And then not long after that, um, you know, of course, the, the Alabama game is going to be creeping up um, in October, and then we won't see, we, we won't see Georgia until, until October. But other than Alabama and Georgia, I mean, you know, in, in no particular order, you know, we, we play Arkansas, Kentucky, we're going to play Mississippi State at home for homecoming. There's another non-conference game. Um, Florida, that's what it is. We're off next week. Then we play Arkansas, and then we play Florida. And then we get Alabama. Um, so then, then we get on into November. We got the Georgia game in Athens in November. you know, And then we'll, we'll finish up the season in Nashville with, with Vanderbilt. Who, Vanderbilt? Looks, I mean, like, well, I may get into that in, in another video later. You know, Vanderbilt isn't the Van the, the Vanderbilt we have today is not your dad's Vanderbilt at all. Um, they they did end up losing the game to Missouri in overtime, and Missouri was ranked seven. You know, again, new video. Missouri is the most overrated team in the top twenty-five, if, at least in the top ten. Definitely in the top ten, probably the top fifteen. Um, yeah, they Missouri. They are. I don't know how they are garnering so much respect in these polls. I don't see it, and a lot of other people don't see it too. But anyway, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, great game last night. The, to me, yeah, the game lived up to the hype. It, it was exciting. Um, 
you know, from what I could tell, our fans really showed out there. Of course, you know, a lot of red in the stands. It wasn't like a, a consolidated orange, you know, mass, but hey, we were there. And, and another thing I wanted to touch on that a few other people did too, but, but something that I did notice to kind of finish this out. Nico Iamaliava, his maturity level and his composure is we Tennessee probably hasn't had that well of a composed quarterback in a long, long time. You know, maybe Josh Dobbs, but even before Josh Dobbs, you'd have to go back back a good ways. Um, a, another kind of show me something point from the game last night that everybody was was really looking for was how, how is he going to perform? How, how is he going to manage the game under that kind of pressure in that kind of environment, being on the road with those kinds of noise and distraction and, and everything else? How how is he how is he going to do? Um, is it going to get to him? Is he still going to be able to play? Is he still going to be able to operate anything similar to what he's done in the first couple of weeks? The answer is very much yes. He he handled the game un beautifully, you know, unbelievably. Uh, the the crowd didn't get to him. The stress didn't get to him. The the moment wasn't too big for him. And he said several times during the week, leading up to the game, he 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 would rather play on the road than he would at at home because he's a, he is a player that's going to welcome a challenge, and 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 meet a challenge head on. So he he did wonderful. Even you know, you know, losing those two fumbles on those sacks. You know, was that all his fault? No. You know, could he have held on a little better? You know, maybe, yeah, but I'm not going to criticize him over over something like that. He could have, and, and Tennessee fans who have been around longer than a couple of years know what I'm talking about, he could have folded up. He he could have just folded up. The, the pressure would have gotten into him, and we would have looked up, and Tennessee would have been behind by three touchdowns because, they, because Oklahoma wouldn't have had a problem shutting our offense down, and that, that wasn't the case. So... Great game. Nico handled the game incredibly well, handled himself incredibly well. Um, penalties were still kind of an issue, just dumb stuff, really. A face mask or two. I think maybe there was a false start in there or two. Um, nothing that anybody went out of their way to do. Um, there was a rough in the passer call that I think was kind of, uh, I don't know. You know, I, I kind of err. Now, obviously, yes, I do err on the side of safety, but I also err on the side of letting the guys play the game. Um, and and speaking of safety, normally I wouldn't talk about something like this, but I do want to close out with this: the Oklahoma player that was injured last night with a, a really bad leg break. Um, I wish that guy a speedy recovery, and I wish that guy all the the goodwill and and luck in, in the world. Um, I've seen that kind of injury on other players before, and it doesn't it's, it doesn't get any easier seeing an injury like that. Um, I, I wish him the best. I really do. Um, I hope his surgery goes well. I hope his rehab goes even better, and I hope he's able to play again uh, before he leaves Oklahoma. They said he was afraid of a senior. Um, maybe if he's out for long enough, he can get another year of eligibility or I don't know how all that, how, how all that would work, but I do wish that guy the, the best in, in the world. I hate seeing anybody injured like that. Those kinds of injuries are, are tough, are tough, but great game. Tennessee comes out of Norman with the win 25 to, to 15 and, um, Take a, take a week off, you know, enjoy the, the Georgia-Alabama game next week. I'll have a little bit to say about that one. And there'll be a lot of people that'll have a lot to say about that one. That one will be fun. But um, some of my videos upcoming, I may kind of step away from college football for a little bit. I know that I'm on got, uh, got a video coming out tomorrow, just a funny story about something that happened to me at a gas station a while back. So just kind of kind of one of those one of those things. But um, so, yeah, I may have. You know, a little bit of variety, some some non-football stuff. Um, I don't really know what. I'll, I'll kind of work on a on a few things and you know see what may be interesting. But but yeah, this is just my simple you know little recap. If you care to to hear what what I thought about the game last night, great game. Looking forward to the rest of them. 
Um, Y'all have a great weekend. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.